Hey everyone, Zach from Out There Vans in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today we're going to be talking about how to install a rooftop fan in your camper van. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we jump in, I do want to tell you that most of the products that I'm talking about today, I will be putting Amazon affiliate links down in the description below where you yourself can go and purchase the supplies, the tools necessary to be able to install one of these fans in your van DIY style. Um, if you do make a purchase through those links, we do get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon and we greatly appreciate it. As I mentioned, we're talking about installing a fan in your rooftop today. We will specifically be dealing with a Max Air fan 7500k deluxe series fan um, i will tell you all of these max air deluxe series are nearly identical in terms of the physical size shape and form of it it just uh, depends on the features that that fan physically has so all of the max air deluxe uh, series will be applicable for this installation but i will also tell you that uh, nearly 99 percent of the other fans on the market uh, will be basically a similar installation to this. Uh, let's talk about the Max Air Deluxe fan, what all comes included with it, and uh, then we'll hop into the van after that and I'll walk you through the full installation process. Coming right out of the box, we have a few main parts to our fan. I'm going to remove the top fan shroud. This we can set aside until we are all done cutting our hole, putting in our trim ring, and this will be one of our final steps of the install. This is the main fan body, all the motor, the electronics are housed up with the uh, upper lid here in the enclosure. Your wiring is all bundled up and ready to go. Um, as you twist the body, that's what allows this fan shroud to vent upwards. I'm going to go ahead and just carefully set this aside for now. Next up, incorporated in that stack, we've got two plastic trim rings. This trim ring on top is the main trim ring that we will be attaching to the rooftop. On the bottom side, it just has a grooved kind of flat surface to it for us to uh, create our seal. Up on the top, there is a weather strip seal. And then on two of the four sides, there are little metal tabs that give this some support. So after we get this all uh, screwed into the rooftop, we can drop our main fan body on top of it and put two screws in on each side to, to mate them together. I'll go over this more as we're cutting our hole, but no matter what, think of this as your template for your 14 inch by 14 inch hole that you will need to be cutting on the rooftop of your van. And then next up is a piece that we are going to set aside for today, but this is your interior fan trim ring. So this comes with about a six inch lip on it. With most of our vans, we end up cutting about four inches off of this uh, at the end product, and then we'll slide it up into place once we do have a ceiling up in the van. And this just makes everything nice and flush and pretty. So like I mentioned, this is an accessory we're gonna set aside today. Be sure when you set yours aside, put it in a place for one, you can find it, and two, it's in a safe spot that's not gonna get all scuffed up during your build. Um, and it's not gonna get uh, broken or damaged. The other items included, um, all Max Air Deluxe fans will include a hardware set. Now in this hardware kit, there are three different screw types. There are four screws that have a white head to them. That white head is for that interior fan trim ring that we just mentioned. Um, they're a white head, so it all perfectly matches that uh, white shroud. But there are four fatter Phillips head screws that are a little shorter, a little fatter. Those are for your four tabs when you are mating the fan coming down. And then the remainder of them are for our holes on this upper trim ring here that will be going on the rooftop. There's a set of instructions that will walk you through how to use your fan. And then this one being the 7500K series, it comes with a remote and batteries. So you can wirelessly control your fan. This is a feature that uh, for some, they might think I don't need to spend the money on that. For the $20 or so upgrade that this generally is, um, I find it very worth it, especially if your fan is over top of your bed. This is a great feature to have to not have to go climb over top of your bed to turn on your fan if it is located in a more inconvenient spot like that. Before we get into tools, I do want to point out that Fan Installations is a service that we do offer here at our shop, Out There Vans in Grand Junction, Colorado. So. Before you worry about all these tools, all of the knowledge needed to install one of these fans, feel free to shoot us an email at build at outtherevans.com or visit our website outtherevans.com and reach out to us and we'd be happy to set up an appointment to get a fan installed in your van. Let's talk about some essential tools that you're going to need to be able to do this install. So number one, 
a cordless drill, a jigsaw of some sort. I personally prefer cordless anytime I'm working in a van. I'm going to need a file to be able to file down my edge after I go through with the jigsaw. I have a step down drill bit. That way I can drill my four pilot holes and then I can go down with a step down drill bit and quickly enlarge in that hole to be able to fit my uh, jigsaw blade. I've got a Phillips head uh, driver bit. That way I can drive in all the hardware that is included with this fan. Beetle tape is another item you'll be needing. Beetle tape is the first level of sealant we'll be using within this system. But additionally, I suggest getting a couple tubes of self-leveling lap sealant. This will be our secondary exterior level. That'll give us two layers of sealant and a layer of redundancy for keeping water out. In terms of installing that, you will need a caulk gun, whether it's a manual or electronic one. Some painter's tape. My last couple things here is some enamel sealant to be able to seal out your cut. You don't wanna leave that metal exposed for possible corrosion down the road. A little sponge brush to be able to apply that enamel sealant. And now the last piece of the puzzle is something that I find very important. It's not in a lot of instructional videos out there, but something that we do in every van that we suggest you consider as well and that is an interior backer for your trim ring. So ultimately, this trim ring that we're going to be screwing into the roof, it has lots of holes surrounding it that you can simply drill a hole in your roof and screw it right into the sheet metal of your van. However, in a lot of these vans, I will point out, especially Ford Transit vans, the sheet metal is incredibly thin up on that ceiling. So what I highly recommend is on the back side of the metal of your van is to install a backing trim piece. So that way you can sandwich that sheet metal of your ceiling and it'll also screw into this backing plate and it then provides a little extra structural rigidity up on the uh, rooftop of your van. Now this is just a piece of wood that is a scrap piece that I filled in an empty spot on a CNC cut um, in our shop. Obviously not everyone is going to be running into that convenience. So what I would typically do is I would cut four one and a half inch by 15 and a half inch pieces so I can basically create this ring. Some thought, not a requirement, but I highly recommend it. All right, and so for our install today, we will be installing actually two fans in this Ram ProMaster van behind me. This is a 136 wheelbase high roof van. Even though we're installing this in a Ram ProMaster van, this installation is nearly identical for every van out there. I'll point out a couple small differences along the way of what that looks like. But in this van, we're going to be installing a fan towards the front up in this upper section here, as well as one in the back rear section here. That way we have the best airflow possible for this client in her van. So step one is I'm going to go on the inside and I'm going to mark out my two holes that are 14 inches by 14 inches. Now it's important in this step that I go and make sure that they are, for one, perfectly centered in the van. The ProMaster has these upper ribs that make it very easy to uh, confirm a center point without having to measure wall to wall. Sometimes wall to wall can be difficult in these vans because the rib structures may not be symmetrical from side to side but ProMaster makes it easy. Um, and I'll also tell you Sprinter and Transit make it fairly simple as well. So now I've gone through with both of my holes because I'm installing two fans here today. And I've basically gone and marked off with a Sharpie my four corners that I need to drill out. Now I didn't make a huge mark tracing all of these on the interior here because I'm going to now go through from the bottom side and drill out four corners, four holes that I can go on the upper side and then trace out my perfect square for cutting. All right, so now I'm up on the rooftop and we can see my four holes from up above that I drilled from down below. I've got one, two, three, four, aligning out to make my hole where I will be eventually dropping my fan shroud in from the top. So now what I'm going to do is wipe these shavings away. Note that you'll make a shaving mess, so be ready for some cleanup. But I will be going and putting some painter's tape on here so I can draw nice straight lines connecting all of these dots. And I will measure a few times to make sure that our hole truly is 14 by 14. And I will go ahead and cut out this hole. Now before I take all this tape off and file down the edges, I'm going to take my trim ring and press it down into place to make sure 
that everything fits to my standards. All right, so now my holes are all cut and I've cleaned around the edges. I've gone through and applied an enamel sealant around all of the edges. Now I'm gonna let that sit for a couple hours. I'll swing back to it and we'll start plugging these holes. Now our sealant has cured and we're going to move into the butyl tape stage. So we're gonna grab some of this butyl tape. It's like a clay strip and we're gonna create a nice even seal all the way around the exterior of the hole we just drilled and cut. Um, so that way, as we screw this trim ring down, there's a layer on the bottom side of this ring that will help squeeze and create a nice uh, watertight seal all the way around our hole. Now, a couple things to note here. This front one is on a different panel height that it is all one level already going all the way around all four corners. So that one's super easy. Just lay some down on each side, we'll be good to go. The back, however, is in an area that has these peaks and valleys. So what I'm gonna do is start out by going through and applying three layers of butyl tape in these valleys to bring these valleys up to the height of these peaks. That way then I can do one strip all the way across these backs and then one on the side too to uh, make one nice top layer. Now I will begin putting my trim ring in place as well as tuck my backer down through the back side and the bottom side holding it up to the top and we will start going around each individual hole and putting a screw in it. Last step up here before we plug the fan in the hole is to apply some self-leveling lap sealant. I find it takes about a tube and a half for each hole to apply a nice uh, well covered um, amount onto this trim ring. Self-leveling lap sealant is all applied. You can see it smooths out pretty nice after application. I have our Max Air fan that's gonna go into place. In order to install this, I need access to the two bolt holes on either side of the fan shroud here. So what I'm going to do is manually twist this to raise the lid or raise the bottom out of it. And now I'll be able to take my four screws, two per side, and screw them through this fan and into this rooftop trim piece that has four tabs total two on either side. Now when I'm lifting this down into place, uh, for one right now my lap sealant's still pretty soft so I'm going to be careful not to uh, drag my fan through it. Um, if you'd like you can let this set up for a day if you have a nice waterproof uh, watertight space to do so. Uh, for my sake today I'm just going to move forward with getting these in place and be careful with the installation here. So the biggest thing I want to be careful I don't drag through is these wires. So I'm going to start out by just kind of settling those into place and align one corner here. Straight over this direction. Sometimes I take a little push in to seat them down into place. Be careful not to drop these bolts into your wet sealant as I almost did it there because they become quite the mess then. And I'll often press down on this fan a little bit from the top because it needs to be nested down to that seal for these holes to all align. And just like that, our fan from up above is all installed and weather tight and good to go. So what that means is we can finally do this. Oh yes. So here you can see, fans all installed into the trim housing. These were the bolts we just put in. And you can see a nice weather tight seal all the way around. Well, just like that, we have two new holes cut in our ceiling. We've patched them up with some extra ventilation and they are back to being weather tight in here. So let's take a look at these from the bottom side. You can see this is the trim ring I mentioned uh, using it as a clamp ring from the bottom. But now we've got our power here that's all ready to be tapped into the house system when we do wire it in. And the fan itself, you know, quick and easy function to it. And then those trim rings that we were talking about earlier, those guys will be able to slot in this inner section right here. So you can cut them down and have nice uh, flush access to your fan up here. Now the last little shameless plug in this video, 
I have to tell you to be sure to head over to shopouttheirvans.com, link down below, and purchase a Max Air insulated uh, vent cover for your fan up here. So what these are, they're a nice blackout option. So if you want to not have to see through that translucent uh, cap in the early morning when you're trying to sleep in and that sun's rising at 5 a.m., you can slap this puppy up there and uh, shield yourself from the sun rays. Or additionally, if it's winter time and you want to uh, protect your heat from rising out through that opening of plastic up there, you can also attach one of these. They're magnetic, magnets attach to the back of these trim rings here. So that way you can just grab it out and simply attach it up and uh, have a nice secure fit. Now that you've watched this, we love when people try and tackle things like this themselves, but ultimately if you have any questions about your own capabilities of doing it, we recommend head on over to uh, your nearest professional van upfitter and uh, have them take care of it. If you are in our area here on the Western Slope of Colorado, uh, feel free to give us a shout, www.outtheirvans.com and we can get you taken right care of. And I keep these fans in stock and ready to go. If you have any questions on uh, just the overall install today or uh, magnetic uh, window covers, feel free to write them down in the comment section down below or reach out to us on our website. Uh, we hope to see you in the next video. Be sure to like this video if it was helpful to you and hit subscribe so we can see you in the next video.